Energy price caps have been a popular proposal recently, and we can see why they're superficially attractive. Energy prices have been increasing rather a bit, particularly in the EU and in the UK. And indeed in the UK, before Liz Truss came in, energy prices were going to go up 80%. Furthermore, Russia appears to have had an increase of 38% in its energy exports, suggesting Russia is gaining significantly from these price increases, much to the consternation of the EU, the US and the G7 more broadly. So this really begs the question though, of whether a price cap would be effective, and whether a price cap could in fact create unintended consequences, and potentially be self-defeating. So that's what I'm going to look at in this video. But of course, if you have any thoughts about this, definitely do let me know that in the comments below. The first major price cap I'll talk about is that on Russian oil. Now we can see why this would be attractive to the G7 in general. Reportedly, Russia's earnings from energy exports have gone up 38% over the past year. Given that oil is reportedly more lucrative than gas, the bulk of this would reportedly be coming from oil exports. The G7 has, in principle, agreed to impose a price cap on Russian oil. Notably, however, the G7 is not the whole world, so it's only a select set of countries at the moment. Furthermore, details are a little bit inchoate and unconfirmed at the moment. It appears this would be operationalized by banning shipments on Russian oil if it is to be bought above a particular price, and or banning insurance upon those shipments. Because you can't really ship anything without insurance at the moment. Now there's a few notable issues with this plan, and in particular details aren't confirmed at the moment, and perhaps these could be refined, but there are some significant barriers to this even working. The first major barrier is that China and India and Turkey and many other markets are not in alignment with this plan, at least at the moment. And if, for example, the G7 bans Russian oil, China or India could simply keep buying it. And there's no reason they wouldn't keep buying it. Indeed, they could offer just $1 more than the price cap amount and get all of the Russian oil, thereby taking Russian oil away from any of the sanctioning countries and thereby increasing the price of all other oil. Potentially, this would create multiple prices of oil in the market, but ultimately, it would raise the price of oil in the countries that sanction Russian oil. That is, the countries that purport to impose a price cap on Russian oil would then see oil prices increase in those countries. So this could ultimately backfire. The second issue is just practical. Notably, they plan to ban shipments and or insurance of shipments of Russian oil if that oil is to be bought above a particular price. However, many Western shippers still aren't actually shipping Russian oil. This is because it's very difficult to insure those shipments, because it's very difficult to ensure those shipments aren't going to benefit a sanctioned individual. So in essence, the whole plan to operationalize this price cap seems not to really be very effective, at least not effective without the buy-in of all of the other countries that might be buying this Russian oil. So it's not even clear how exactly this would work without it backfiring. And in essence, it doesn't appear that this would do anything, at least not do anything beneficial to the countries that are trying to ban the prices or ban Russian oil exports, and certainly it could exacerbate inflation. The next price cap is that on Russian gas. This idea has been floating around the EU, in part to try to get on top of energy prices. However, this is extremely unlikely to get off the ground, and if it does, it will probably backfire spectacularly. And that's because Vladimir Putin has already indicated that if the EU tries to cap prices of Russian gas, he will simply cut off gas supplies. That's a credible threat, because Russia gets much less money from gas than it does from oil. This means that it is extremely unlikely you'll get unanimous assent to a cap on Russian gas prices. If you look at countries like Hungary, Slovakia, Austria, they're all reliant upon Russian gas. If you cut off the gas supply, those economies will go into a recession, a steep and deep recession. If we look at countries like Germany, Germany reportedly takes in $27 billion of Russian energy. This is then converted into $1.9 trillion of outputs, at least according to Credit Suisse. This effectively makes Germany highly levered to Russian energy. So for Germany's economy, this would be almost catastrophic to cut off gas, because gas prices or energy prices more generally would simply increase significantly. We're already seeing major problems for businesses within Germany. Germany could try to cap energy prices, but of course this will just lead them to having to force internationalization, many of their energy suppliers, or to bail out their energy suppliers, or to take on untold amounts of government debt in order to prop up the energy sector. So in general terms, a price cap on Russian gas 
simply will not be supported and it would not succeed and it would backfire monumentally if the EU were to do so. Europe has also floated the idea of a price cap on all LNG imports. This is very unlikely to get off the ground, but it would fail spectacularly if it did. This would be absolutely terrible for Europe, and it's not difficult to see why. Suppose Europe imposes a price cap of, we'll go with $5 on LNG. Say you're a company that is exporting LNG, and you can sell it for $5 in Europe, or $5 in a cent in some other country. It doesn't matter wherever, wherever country that is. You're going to export it to the other location. Europe would then find itself without any LNG imports. Then if they were to add on to this a price cap on Russian gas, which would take Russian gas out of the market, I'm not entirely sure where Europe would be getting its gas from. This would create catastrophic consequences. Energy prices would skyrocket in Europe because they don't have enough renewables to make up for a loss of gas. They don't have enough nuclear in all of these other countries to make up for a loss of gas. They simply wouldn't be able to power everything. Basically, Europe would have to forego energy if it were to price cap LNG because people just won't sell it. Now granted, if people aren't selling to Europe, then there's only so much demand for LNG elsewhere. So maybe Europe could get a little bit of LNG, but absolutely only after everyone else has taken their share. So it's not entirely clear how this would work. And due to this obvious fact, this is probably unlikely to really get through as a serious proposal, but we are seeing it floated around nevertheless. Europe has also floated the idea, and is potentially very likely to bring in, super profits taxes on energy makers, and particular renewables makers who have been able to profit from the increase in energy prices more broadly. Now one can see why this is initially attractive to the EU. They can impose a super profits tax and then gives this to citizens who are otherwise having to pay higher energy prices, thereby offsetting the increase in price. The main issue of this, of course, is it deters supply coming to the market. You're hardly going to build another wind turbine or another solar farm or whatever the case might be if you know there's going to be a super profits tax. It also creates a very bad precedent for investment. You know that if you're a profitable company, if you're doing incredibly well, if you're satisfying a market need, the European Union might just come along and impose a super profits tax. It makes the EU a much less desirable place to do business. So not only would this deter new supply coming to the market at a time when the EU really needs that new supply, it's also going to deter investment more generally. It has severe unintended consequences. So the EU really needs to think carefully before imposing a super profits tax because it could easily backfire in the medium to long term and they could easily find themselves without any new supply coming to the market because it isn't economically worthwhile doing so if the EU is just going to impose these taxes. The next price cap is just imposing a price cap on energy supply more generally. So for example in the UK, saying to energy companies, you can't charge people more than X amount of pounds to supply energy. And that appears to be what Liz Trust is trying to do. Saying to energy companies, you can't charge more than say 2,500 pounds to supply energy to a household, and equivalently for businesses. Now there are two overarching ways to facilitate this. What the UK is intending to do is impose that price cap, and then the government will be saying to the energy providers, well, we know you're going to be wearing a loss from this. So we, as the government, are going to make up the difference between what you're charging your consumers and what the wholesale price is. This apparently will cost around 150 billion pounds. The government here is effectively undertaking unlimited liability to enable the energy prices to be subsidized. That's how the UK seems to be doing it. We've seen other proposals in Europe seemingly which would just require the energy supplier to wear the loss. The energy supplier would not necessarily be subsidized, they wouldn't necessarily get any compensation, they would just need to wear the loss that the government is forcing upon them. That second approach, that EU one, which seems to have been the case in France and potentially Germany, that is very unlikely to succeed long term. The reason that's very unlikely to succeed is these energy suppliers could easily end up going bankrupt, which we have seen. These energy suppliers would then need to be nationalized, which is not necessarily ideal because then you're just taking the loss that the private sector was bearing and now the government is going to keep bearing that loss. And the government is also notoriously inefficient at running companies. Hence why privatization got off the ground because the government is terrible at incentivizing people to actually go out and create value. Because the government generally doesn't actually do incentives very well. And hence why the private sector is generally more efficient. And hence privatization. So this nationalization is generally not what you want to achieve. Particularly if the nationalization is forced by dint of government fiat. That is, if the government imposes a regulation that forces your company to become unprofitable when it would not otherwise be in the case. 
then the government is effectively forcing you into nationalization. That sets a terrible precedent and not something the government really wants to be highlighting it is going to do. And even if these companies aren't nationalized, they might require significant government bailouts, as we've seen in Germany with Uniper, and the government might then ultimately need to take a big stake in them or do other things, and or these energy suppliers simply will not keep up with maintenance and various other things, leading to a worsening in the quality of all of the things they're supplying, potentially creating blackouts in the longer term. So ultimately between those proposals, the UK one is probably the one that sets the least bad precedent and is the more viable. That is the UK's proposal of saying to an energy company, we know this is going to make a loss for you if you're supplying at a subsidized price, and we are going to pay you to do that subsidy. That's probably more viable in the long term, because then the UK is basically saying to all of the private sector here, we're not going to force you to wear a loss. If we need subsidies, we are going to help you supply those subsidies, at least in the short term. Hence why these proposals aren't brilliant, but the UK one is the less bad of a bad bunch. And in any case, I hope that gives you a bit of an overview of some of the price cap proposals, why many of them are really not going to work very well, and in particular, the price caps on Russian oil and Russian gas are likely to fail quite badly, and also why a price cap on LNG imports into the EU is also going to fail miserably. If we're looking at price caps on energy supply, the UK one is probably the least bad of a bad bunch. Nevertheless, if you have any thoughts about what is going on with any of these price caps, or with energy prices more generally, I would be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And otherwise, of course, it would be great if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel.